previously on the Mayhem Prone So. I believe that Celestia and Luna may in fact have their own elements. If Luna and Celestia have elements, then which elements do they have? Well, once again, the answer will sock you. I don't think that the princesses have elements of harmony. I believe that Celestia and Luna wield the elements of disharmony. And now, the conclusion. Hey everyone, Mayhem Prone here from the Mayhem Prone Show, where today... For years, the element of disharmony has been one of the most popular theories in the entire Brony fandom. And for the very few of you who have never heard of this theory, go watch the Brony Notions video on this first. The link is down in the description below. But let's all be honest, this theory is a bit out of date. Over the course of two and a half years, the so has changed a lot. In fact, some of the possible bearers have even reformed. So today, to celebrate hitting 200 subscribers, I'm going to bring to you my updated roster of the elements of disharmony. But that's not all. I believe that we have seen all six elements of disharmony in the show, which I will also be explaining to you guys. But with that out of the way, let's get right into it. Well, to address the elephant in the room, Diamond Tiara is no longer a villain, so we need someone else to embody cruelty. And after thinking about it for about 20 seconds, I realized that the obvious choice has to be Garble the Dragon. He was a massive jerk to Spike in every one of his appearances, he tried to murder a baby phoenix, and he tried to become the Dragon Lord just so he could destroy Equestria. I don't think anybody would deny that he is mean just for the sake of being mean. And this candidate fits astoundingly well with what I think is the element of cruelty, the Dragon Scepter. This magical artifact has control over the entire species of dragons, which has consistently been shown to be the most cruel and hostile species in all of Equestria. It is likely that it was the Scepter's fault that dragons have been mostly mean throughout the entire series. Which is why I think it is secretly the element of cruelty. You know, my goal of this video was to find six completely new characters to be the elements of disharmony, and I tried really hard, but no matter how much I tried, I can't find anyone better to be the element of gloom than Mod Pie. Nobody would deny that she is the most melancholy character in the entire series. I mean, she was literally made to be the opposite of Pinkie Pie. It's practically a match made in heaven, but the real question is, where is the element of glue in the series? And quite simply, I believe that it's Boulder. While Boulder isn't a crystal, he is a rock which could easily be containing a crystal on the inside. In addition, Boulder is purposely designed to look boring and melancholy, and it's the item that's closest associated to Mod Pie, which is why I believe that it is the element of gloom. Well, when I think of selfish people in MLP, one of my first thoughts is Gladmane. Throughout his episode, he was shown to be completely obsessed with money. Gladmane was willing to deceive his customers, destroy friendships, and even hurt family bonds just to make more money. He was willing to betray those who were closest and most loyal to him just so he could make a profit, which definitely fits my definition of selfishness. As for the element of selfishness itself, I actually believe that it is the book of inspiration manifestation. But Mayhem, you'll say, that's a book, not a gem. And yes, that's true, but if you look closely at the book, it appears to have a picture of a gem on it, which leads me to believe that there is a gem inside of it which grants it its dark properties. As for the artifact itself, it obviously spreads selfishness. The book grants its user the ability to twist reality into whatever they want. The downside is, is that the book eventually corrupts its user to the point that they bend reality to their own will, with little regard for the happiness and safety of other people. Basically, the user can take whatever they want. This is why I believe that there is a gem inside of the book of inspiration manifestation that's the element of selfishness. In 
In order to find the element of deceit, I looked for the greatest lie in the show, the one that had the most consequences on the world of Equestria. So therefore, I believe that the bearer of this element would have to be Queen Chrysalis. For years, even before season 1, she has been lying to all of the changelings by saying that they had to steal love to survive. And now that the changelings have been reformed, they have a much higher quality of life, which means that Chrysalis was purposely making life tough for the changelings so that she would have unlimited power over them. The lie was so bad that when it was revealed, Chrysalis was immediately deposed and had to leave her own kingdom. In my opinion, this was the ultimate act of deceit throughout the series. As for the element itself, I believe that it is Queen Chrysalis's throne. This is because one of the forms of deceit is denial, and the throne denies all non-changelings of one of the most important aspects of Equestria, magic. But the symbolism gets even deeper because the throne itself is a lie. In order to get rid of magic, you have to get rid of friendship because friendship is magic. But the throne has little to no effect on anyone's friendships, so the powers that it supposedly has are lies. With so many lies surrounding its nature, I believe that Chrysalis's throne is the element of deceit. Now if you haven't watched part 1 of this theory yet, the rest of this is going to be a bit confusing, because I believe the element of betrayal is Nightmare Moon, and the element itself is the opal on her scarf. This one honestly doesn't require much explanation. One of the defining points of the series was where Nightmare Moon betrayed Celestia and the entire kingdom of Equestria by turning pure evil. This one betrayal was so monumental that it got Nightmare Moon banished to the moon, and it single-handedly put the events of the television show into motion. Due to the close association of the opal on her scarf and the world-changing betrayal that Nightmare Moon committed, I believe that she is the element of betrayal. Well, now we've made it to the main event, the leader of the element of disharmony, Dark Magic. And throughout the series, there's only really one character who I would say is worthy of such a title. The ferocious and monstrous Daybreaker. And the element itself would be the crystal upon her crown. From her brief appearance, it's obvious that she is one of, if not the most powerful ponies in all of Equestria, except for maybe quadruple Alicorn Twilight. Her magical capacity alone outranks pretty much everyone in the entire series. And if that doesn't convince you, might I remind you that Celestia, Daybreaker's alter ego, is one of the very few ponies throughout the series that we have seen using dark magic? With her unrivaled power, a heart of pure evil, the evidence for her having an element, and the fact that Celestia actually used dark magic in the show, I think it's very likely that Daybreaker would be the wielder of the element of dark magic. Garble the Dragon, Mod Pie, Gladmane, Queen Chrysalis, Nightmare Moon, and Daybreaker. These are the new elements of disharmony. But what do you think? Are either of my two theories plausible? Who do you think would make up the elements of disharmony? Are there any artifacts from the show that I missed that makes a better candidate for one of these elements? Please tell me in the comment section down below. And one more time, I have to thank all of you for helping me hit 200 subscribers. I am so happy to know that I'm making content that people actually enjoy. And don't worry, I've got plenty of things on the way. So, until next time, I'm Mayhem from the Mayhem Prone Show, and goodbye!